Now, all those banking headlines coming through our platform and also on uh, the web, obviously worrying investors. Let's cut through all that noise with Bill Blaine, strategist at Shard Capital and author of Morning Porridge. Bill, thank you so much for joining us. There's been so much going on out there. First SVB, then the central banks, then the markets, and now uh, more coming out of the US. Can you help us cut through the noise? What is the real story here? Well, this um, we're back into one of these extraordinary um, market conundrums, uh, which basically boils down to almost like a war between the forces of chaos, which is people panicking about how markets are going to develop, and the forces of stability, which are the central banks trying to engineer that stability by persuading the market that the banking system is stable. So as this banking crisis has really come to fruition, um, we've seen a number of skirmishes. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, I would say, is just a skirmish. It was quickly addressed by banks backstopping every depositor and providing liquidity. And then, of course, we had the extraordinary thing of Jamie Dimon, the head of uh, JP Morgan, leading $30 billion of Wall Street's finest in to try and rescue uh, another ailing bank, First Republic. At the same time, we've got this incredible story going on around um, Credit Suisse, where uh, the Swiss National Bank, and I'm sure together with the European Central Bank, managed to put together a very quick uh, backstop plan to provide them as, with as much liquidity as needed. And at the same time, uh, Christine Lagarde, the head of the European Central Bank, went out there and I would say courageously decided to go ahead with a 50 basis point hike by the ECB at a time of market um, tension to demonstrate just how safe and secure the system was. But at the end of the day, it's all a bit of a game. It's central banks trying to persuade us there's nothing to worry about. And then it's the doubts of the market about just how badly damaged the rise in interest rates has uh, hit the bond markets, therefore leaving massive holes in the real numbers that underlie banks. And I'll be very happy to talk about just how much damage has been done to the bond market. Well, we've heard about SVB and now First Republic. Issue is investors want to know what is really under the hood? Yeah, that's a great question, by the way. All right, what's under the bonnet? The size of the global bond market is critical. Uh, the last estimate that I saw from ICMA was $128 trillion, seriously big number. Now, the average maturity of the international bond market, and I was surprised when I discovered this, is something like 12 and a half years. I would have thought it would have been much shorter. But no, it's uh, it's it's longer because a lot of high-grade and government bonds are bought by pension and insurance companies, what we call the real money accounts. And they need to hold long-duration bonds in order to meet their future liabilities. And then we looked at what has been the average rise in interest rates around the global bond market for the last year since banks abandoned QE and started quantitative tightening. And it's around about two and a half percent. Now, if you now do the maths, the simple bond maths, that would show you that of the 128 trillion value of the global bond market, the price today has fallen by about $28 trillion. That's a seriously large volume uh, of money that has notionally been lost. And I say notionally because remember, all these bonds are still going to repay at par, but because yields has risen, the value of the underlying bonds has fallen. So that's the basic problem that's created the crisis within banking. Because what happens is the market then thinks, okay, if the value of the bonds that a bank holds has fallen dramatically, that bank must be in trouble. And as soon as anyone says a bank's in trouble, depositors hear it around the globe. They hear that 
and they want their money back as quickly as possible. And that's what triggers the classic run on a bank. That's what killed Silicon Valley Bank. That's what killed Signature. And certainly, Bill, after First Republic and uh, SVB, we have seen uh, British banks seeing a pickup in inquiries, as you mentioned earlier, when in, uh, traders say, oh, or investors say, oh, sound, doesn't sound very good. Uh, we have seen a pickup in inquiries to switch cash between institutions. Barclays, for example, has uh, said it's seen a rise in inquiries to switch or open business accounts in the past few days. Virgin Money as well said it had seen uh, net business uh, deposit inflows in recent days. So what are we looking at here? Is this another Northern Rock situation? Well, Northern, Northern Rock was a classic liquidity crisis. And you're right, it was very, very similar to what happened, has been happening in the last couple of days in terms of depositor angst about banks. Northern Rock faced a double whammy. First of all, the markets were closed. So Northern Rock's uh, approach to business was to borrow heavily from the markets in order to finance itself as the cheapest and fastest mortgage provider in the UK. And when that money dried up, it was unable to find money elsewhere, which caused depositors with the banks to immediately line up to get their money out. It was the first time we'd seen a banking run in the UK for about 100 years. It was really quite extraordinary. Now, the same thing is happening again, but this time central banks, unlike last time with Northern Rock, the Bank of England just sat back and waited for the market to solve it. This time, central banks have gone in preemptively and they've introduced this um, new windows so that banks can go and borrow from the Fed discount window or from the ECB or the Bank of England in order to enhance their liquidity. And they've even created new backstop facilities that allow banks to pledge bonds very, very cheaply against their real value. Now that was all designed to create this uh, vision of stability. I'm not gonna say illusion, because it, it should create stability that banks will not suffer a liquidity crisis. But yet it's still happening. People are very unsure about the losses. And I think that one of the reasons for that is that, well, you will always find the roots of the next financial crisis in the way that the last one was addressed. And one of the things that happened in the last financial crisis is we redefined what bank capital is. We introduced a new instrument called the Contingent Capital Bond, or COCOs. Now, COCOs are unlike anything else in the bond market. What happens is if a bank's capital falls below a minimum threshold, that COCO, Contingent Capital Instrument, converts into either equity or is written off completely. Now, the thing is, when you have a bank like Credit Suisse, which has a very high capital ratio, 14% was its capital ratio. If it had suffered a major flight and had seen its capital fall, even by a modest amount, by 6%, down to 8%, the COCOs would have executed. That would have been a tremendous signal of instability. It would immediately have triggered crisis for other banks as well. So I think that these COCOs that were designed to make sure that capital holders suffered in the event of a bank unwind, they are now one of the vectors of problems within it. I'm not sure the rest of the market agrees with me on that, but I'm pretty sure that COCOs are going to be at the root of the next crisis, because even though we've so solved some of the skirmishes, as I called them earlier, the next crisis, we still don't know who it's going to be, but someone else is going to struggle in the next few weeks. So amid all this, after everything we've heard so far, how should investors and traders position themselves in the next 12 months? Well, I think there's a couple of things they need to think about. And the first thing is, we're maybe making a mistake at the moment. The only thing we're looking at is banks. We know that banks' bond portfolios have taken a major hit. But let's think about the other side of the financial equation, the asset managers. The asset managers who are long bonds as well, they've also struggled. What happens if we get a systemic event in the asset management sector of the market? That could create even more instability. So it's very difficult to point and say what you should do. The classic answer would be buy treasury bonds because treasury bonds are supposedly the most liquid and safest instrument on the planet. 
we know that the US government is always going to repay. Oh, but hang on, what if we have a debt ceiling crisis to magnify this in the next couple of weeks in the US uh, government? That's still a possibility. And we have seen recently in a number of um, crises over the last few years, minor skirmishes again in the market, that the treasury market has gone illiquid at times. Um, maybe people should be thinking about how do they hedge themselves against banks, or maybe they take the view that banks will eventually get bailed out. And I'm increasingly heading towards that view myself, because I think this crisis could get worse. And if it does, we will see banks struggling, at which point they will start to pool their lending offers. And if we start to see lending dry up in the economy, that's when we see the economy plunge into recession, at which point central banks may be forced to intervene to cut rates, effectively replicating the situation in 2009 when we had quantitative easing, artificially keeping interest rates low. And frankly, that's the situation that's created the crisis we have today. These things tend to be circular, don't they? They do, they do. And Bill, I love everything we've talked about because it, it really encapsulates the situation. I'm trying to find a, a term for this this trade. It's almost like a, a smoke screen trade. And I've seen your articles surrounding this Russian term. Um, tell us again what the term is. Mashkarovka is a Russian uh, term meaning to distract. And typically what the, the Russians very successfully do is they persuade you to watch this hand while punching you with that hand. Now, that's typically uh, the way that Russians won the Battle of Stalingrad and all that kind of thing, all that kind of history. Uh, but I think we're actually seeing the same thing happening in the financial markets. Here we are worrying about banks, but it's not just banks that have suffered massive losses or theoretical losses, notional losses, because of the uh, decline in bond prices caused by higher yields. That same effect is being seen across the asset management sector. And I wonder if that's where the chickens are actually going to come home to roost. Brilliant. Right. We have to leave it there. I'm sure we'll check in with you, Bill, uh, as this uh, story progresses. Uh, Bill Blaine there. <laughs> <laughs> Strategist loving the punch early on. Strategist for Shaw Capital and author of Morning Porridge.